where we can actually map out what he's about to do. Is that not phenomenal? But he reveals his secrets only to some, not to all. As it was with Christ, he would speak in parables, not for everybody to understand. Come on. But for those who are hungry, for those who are thirsty, for those who would want to stretch out and reach the hem of his garment, those are the ones he was going to reveal his secrets to, his times and his seasons. Come on. And so we are in right now, this time of the ascending uh, helix, the ascending cycle of Christ that is uh, where in your life right now, where in your family, in the church, in politics, in nations, we can literally map out what is going to take place for some. The unfortunate thing is it will be revealed to all, but only some will receive it. Did Jesus not speak to all when he was on the earth, yet it was only some who received him. Come on. As a matter of fact, I would say the many who even he would stretch out and heal when it was time for them to actually say, yes, we are standing. What did they do? They said, crucify him. Come on. Come on. Have you ever had people in your life that you've done so much for? You've really helped. You've been there for them. You've supported them in the best way that you possibly could. For them as well. And when the, ti and when the tides turned. And the time turned for you to receive support. For you to receive encouragement. They were nowhere to be found. As a matter of fact, they were the ones that were in the starting line that said, crucify have you ever experienced that? You see, the problem with us sometimes is that we don't understand location. Many times we find ourselves in the wrong location. And we wonder, well, Lord, why is this happening? And why is that happening with me? And, and what's going on? And, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to teach you something today that the Lord revealed to me. And it was quite phenomenal. I, I did not understand it before. Although I may have known it before, I didn't clearly understand until, you know, yesterday when he gave me the download. Because let me tell you something. In the midst of the time that God is speaking to us right now, he says, I'm taking you out of the rotation season and I'm going to bring you very soon into a period of translation, yeah? He told us that. And we have to understand that word translation, it comes, it says location, location, location. And we understand that, that idiom in real estate. But here's the thing. One of the meanings in the Greek for that word as it pertains to not just location, but as it pertains to God's order and God's law is the word disestablishment. It, in other words, there are things that has to be disestablished to be, in order for things to be established. And so there are things that need to be removed in order for things to be replaced. And until we remove, things cannot be replaced. And many times you would have heard me, I've been speaking this for quite a while, but what have we actually removed? And here the Lord says, I want, to, I want to do some things with you. And I said, I said, child, children, 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 listen to me. Listen to me. There's change. There's change. There's change. The paradigm shift of change. Get ready to do things differently. And the Lord said to me, he says, even in the homes, even in the homes, in your homes, there's got to be new laws. In your homes, there's got to be new rules. Rules have got to be set. Where rules were not set before, rules have got to be set. Where people were coming in and going out and people were doing things. And I, and I think about young people and, you know, children and, and middle age, uh, sorry, teenagers and, and young adults coming and going as they please. And 
I, have, I can do my own thing. And I'm thinking also where, you know, either the wife is being disrespectful or, or the husband is not honoring. I've seen chaos and confusion happening in so many homes. And here's the Lord. Here's the Lord. In order for the location or the position that I have to prepare you for, he says, there has to be a disestablishment. Because the word disestablishment, really natural, it actually means changing of laws. Laws have got to be changed. Rules have got to be changed. If you were going by a particular set of rules before, recheck it. Go back and check to see if the things that you are doing before, if that is okay. Oh, you're not hearing me. When it comes to spouses, and the Lord began to speak to me about spouses and people who are married and people who want to get married and, and all of that. And he, and he said, listen, he says, spouses have got to get rules. He says, there are rules that have laid down in the word of God concerning, concerning spouses, but they have all abandoned it. And so get back into new rules. So write down some rules here. And the Lord says, one of the rules that you need to do as, as a spouse, you need to have a date evening. It has, got to be, it has got to be you and your spouse alone. We've been so caught up with COVID. We've been so caught up with the rat race of this world that we have forgotten each other. Come on. The spouses, you must not get to that place where, you, where you, your, your words are, are meant to hurt. Your words are meant to harm. Your words are meant to maim. As a matter of fact, get to the place, spouse, but establish a new rule. I'm going to bless that person more than they can possibly bless me. Oh, you're not hearing me. Let it be a challenge. I challenge myself. That's my rule. That I have to disestablish what was before. Because if I feel I was going good before, the Lord says, no, that's just not good enough. I need to bless that person more than they can possibly bless me. I need to take care and, and do whatever I can for that person more than they could possibly do for me. Are you not hearing me? And the Lord began to speak about businesses. And he says, he says concerning businesses, everybody's so caught up. Goodness, I want to start a business. And, and one of the prophetic words that I would have given is, says, get into business. Did you hear me say that? I'm actually going to start another business. Ooh. Yeah. How many, of you go, how many of you are starting a business? Because let me tell you something, the Lord said clearly, he said, I'm going to open the doors and opportunities for business. You see, the job that you are doing is just a job that you're doing. The fat thereof doesn't come from the job that you're doing. The fat thereof comes from the blessings that God is going to give you and the download from the improvisation and the innovations and the inventions. That's where it's going to come. And so he says, concerning, concerning businesses, did you, did you improvise? Are you improvising? Are you innovating? He says, I'm going to, and it, don't let it be just a pie in the sky thing. Write it down. Let it be a new law and establish it. Start it now, says the Lord. Many are talking about it, but we're not starting it. Am I correct? You're talking about it, but you're not starting it. And the Lord says, are you paying the tithes on the business? Are you, giving, are you rendering to Caesar what is Caesar's and what is the Lord's? Establishment. He says, I can't bless if you're not in my correct order. And then the last one that the Lord began to speak to me about was concerning politicians and politics. And he says, you will begin to see, and I, I actually began to see it already, where, where laws are going to be removed and laws are going to be replaced. Are you seeing that now in a particular country? He says, you're going to be seeing it in many countries where they are going to, if anything, if there's a particular law and a particular rule uh, that, that is not for the benefit of the people, we are talking about liberty. Come on, remember we were speaking about liberty and freedom, yeah? If it's not for the benefit of the people, the Lord himself will, will download to the politician to strike it off. So there will be a lot of striking off and there will be a lot of replacements that will be taking place. Are you hearing me? And God said that we have to get to that place of realignment. 
And you know, and you know, it all comes down to, here's what it comes down to. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5, it comes down to one thing. It comes down to one thing to come out of here. Lord, change my location. How many of you are comfortable with your location? If your location is not one, you could say, you see me, I am in a place of location, location, location. If you can't boast about that, how many of you know you need to get it changed? How many of you know I'm speaking natural and spiritual here? Yeah? And so here's what this one guy called Enoch, what did he do? To come out of a particular location that was crazy. Because in the time of Enoch, things were going crazy. And the Lord loved Enoch so much that he said, you know what? What is happening now and what I know is about to take place, I'm going to remove your location. He says, by faith, Enoch was taken by what? By what? Right. By whom? God is faith. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see? He did not see? How many of you don't want to see death? The wages of sin is? How many of you have life in you because you have Christ in you? It's the wages of sin brings death. What does the Bible say? Are you on a, I'm speaking parables. I'm speaking. You've got to understand, right? You've got to discern. So that he did not see death. And here's what he says. And was not found because God had what? He shifted location in the natural realm into a dimension of the spiritual realm that he was divinely protected by God. But here's why. For before, say before, before he was taken, he had a testimony. Listen, the only reason God was able to take Enoch out of this realm was because of a testimony he had. It was that he what? Pleased God. And so he qualified for the establishment. He pleased. God. How many of you here want to qualify for the disestablishment so that you can be removed from where you are and, and go to the place and the location and the position that you in? Lord, I'm not comfortable where I am. Oh Lord, I am too comfortable where I am. Ruffle the feathers a little bit that I may step out of the nest. And I'm going to ask you something really crazy. And you're like, where is she going here? Can you turn back time to revert to an earlier stage of your life cycle? Is it possible to turn back time? Is it possible to revert time? so that you can go back to a time before so that all over again you know in movies it can be done you ever see that in movies and they start all over again so i'm asking you is it possible on this earth anywhere on this earth that you can actually go back in time i know you're getting now miles in the midst of it if you could see what i can you reverse time in such a that you can go back in time, even as a baby, and come out to start life all over again. On this earth, is it possible? You know, it seems what I just made is actually revolutionary. It seems like, oh, come on, where are you going? Are we watching a movie or something? Because the idea is, one of the words that I said for, for revolution, do you remember what it was? Tekufa? And it is such a word that demands that we perform a cycle in life such that this circuit brings us right back to our first position. 
a 360 where we started. Am I correct? It's a revolution. But if we said that God says this is one of the things he wants us to do as part of the commonwealth, how is that even possible? Or is it possible? Is it even possible in the natural form or in the spirit? Because when God wants to deal with spiritual matters, he always will give some examples somewhere in the natural. Do you know that? Not, he does that. But is it possible in the natural? And I'm saying, Saying, I'm saying, come on, seriously, is it possible? Can you turn back time? Can you, can you, can you begin a, a living life all over, over and over and over and over? Oh my God. I made a mistake here. Let me start over. Let me go back. And I'm not talking reincarnation and all these crazy things. That's not where I'm going. But you know, God is so awesome that He created a species on the earth that can actually revert into an original position hmm. and come back to an adult and then go back to an original position again. It's almost like immortal. Never dies. Except if some be creature takes it away. One creature on this planet. God put on the earth in the natural so that we can see it in the spirit. You know what it is? It's called an immortal jellyfish. One creature on the earth. It's a little, little, clear looking jellyfish. And you know what else? It's not just found in one part of the earth. The Lord designed this jellyfish that it can anywhere, everywhere. Throughout the seas, this little jellyfish exists. Where when it becomes this adult jellyfish, it goes right back. It doesn't die. It goes right back. I wouldn't give you the technical part of it. It's a whole scientific thing. But it goes right back into the infant stage and comes back as an adult. Is that not amazing? And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, that is awesome. Nicodemus went and Nicodemus asked, what are you talking about being born again? Isn't that I have to go back in my mother's womb and be this little thing and, oh yeah, that's it. Believe it. Isn't it not beautiful though? Do I go back in my mother's womb? Can the, can the camera just show it so that the people who are watching see? And go and be an infant again and then come back out? And How many of you here, look at me, look at me now. How many of you here would like to start life over for, because of the mistakes you would have made? Come on. How many of us have made some mistakes? How many of you made many mistakes? <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was confessing to the Lord, but I was confessing to my children. And I said, you know, in my life of how much ever years, <laughs> I have made too many, not so many. I went with two. Too many mistakes. Can you, can anybody? I said, it's too many for one human being. And so I said, Lord, can I just go back as a babe? Can I just start this thing all over again? And here's the Lord. Sure you can. Because here's what he says, my blood. When you confess your sins, my blood washes you as white as snow, as though it has never happened. Oh, you're not hearing me, man. You're not hearing me, man. So you can start all over again, again. And if per chance you feel as though you may have either lost your salvation, which I don't believe exists, but that you were never truly saved because you find yourself going in a direction that is absolutely contrary to God. 
How many of you know you could just come to the cross? And start all over. That's the God we serve, yet we pull ourselves down. We begin to listen to people who want to pull us down. Come on, listen. How many of us allow our beautiful heirs that God created to listen to people who want to try and destroy us? And he says, no, 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 no. no. You're going to be born again, again, again. Come before me. And every time you come before me, I'm going to increase you again and again and again. And what was there that was not of me, as you confess, I will wash away. Though it has never happened. Come on. That, that immortal jellyfish has nothing on us. Are you there with me? Say praise God for that. Praise God. Now, let's get to the, the real serious part now. Because it's location, location, lo that, location. That's the key. What's the key? If we have to get to this kind of life where we are, we are able to just really be in position, be in alignment, it's about our location. And many times we've been in the wrong Location. How many of you have been in the wrong church? Don't answer. How many of you have been in the right church, but you left it? I just... Uh-huh. Yeah? See, God removes. God removes you. You can't remove yourself. So the moment we remove ourselves, we're now out of location. So, let's go. So we must aspire to return to our original purpose as the jellyfish will start life all over again and be the so-called immortal jellyfish. I would imagine that jellyfish was there in the days of, of the dinosaurs. I would truly imagine that. Is that fascinating? The kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is just phenomenal. You know, I study these things, and this is why you would find I would. I'm all, how many of you know you should always be reading? Always be reading. And I've said this so many times. If you want to hear the voice of God, read. Because he speaks to you out of the things that you have studied. Come on. If you're studying jellyfish, guess what? God is going to speak to you out of jellyfish. If you're studying the sun and the moon and the stars, he's going to reveal something phenomenal about, to, about himself to you concerning that. Amen? I just want to throw that one in. But here's the key. Here's the key. And you want to write this down. Just as the jellyfish in the natural, we want to aspire in the spirit. You see, saints, God erases our mistakes but it all begins in a desert he erases our mistakes roger but it all begins in a desert our best real estate prime real estate right now, is to look for a desert. And look for a desert that has a hill. And when you look and you found a desert with a hill, so the leader, in the desert, where you see the hill, serve the leader. That's the vocation. Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. What on earth is this lady speaking about? 
prime real estate, a desert? Do you know what Israel was? What was Israel? The whole of Israel was a what? A desert. It's now prime real estate, am I correct? Prime real estate. In the midst of a desert. Exodus chapter 3 verse 1. It's, a, it's what we are familiar with, Exodus chapter 3 verse 1. Say now Moses. So we are coming into location. If we're coming into the location, we've got to move a little bit. Remember, remember translation speaks of what? Movement. It means we've got to move. Therefore, it speaks of Exodus. In Exodus, they had to what? Move. And so it says, now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back of the? And came to Horeb, that is, will, will become among Sinai, the mountain of God. Hold on him. Just in that one verse, we are seeing where Moses spent. Listen, we have to understand everything God says I'm doing in four. I'm studying the fours in the Bible. And it says, well, Moses spent here, we're going to learn that Moses spent 40 years in obscurity. Say obscurity. obscurity. In a desert. And not only that, not even owning the flock of sheep that he was taking care of. He was in a, this is a leader of leaders. He had the call of a leader inside of him. I said he was a leader. Yes. Yet this man, who is a leader, was in the back of a desert. Serving his father-in-law with flock that did not even belong to him. You better understand where I'm going. Location, location, location. See, the word Horeb there means desert, or it means a, a, a desolate place. Lord, you see this COVID? No, Lord. I rebuke that spirit that I can't get money. me and the, that government that's saying that I can't that I can have all the people in the church I rebuke that government and God says I'm putting you in a place that is desolate that's my prime location to prepare you I'm preparing you how many of you know we want to live for eternity in Christ? How many of you know in living for eternity in Christ, there's some stuff that needs to come out? You know, Moses was nomadic. Moses moved. Moses moved. Moses moved. See, some of us want to remain what? Stagnant. When the Lord is doing something in an assembly, and it, how many of you know it causes friction? You see me, I out of there. Friction. I'm going to say some things here that I pray that you are blessed by it. Because sometimes we don't understand why we are led to a particular place. Sometimes God would lead, a, lead us to a place. Am I correct? Yeah. Come on. You were somewhere else, and then you're somewhere else. It could be a job. It could be a home. It could be a church. It could be a prison. Hello. And you wonder sometimes, well, Lord, why did you take me out of this? And why did you lead me in this direction in here? And, and, and sometimes we don't even ask the Lord. We just go along with it. But with, with God, everything is purpose. I said, with God, everything is purpose. And for God to take a Moses from the fine life he was living, come on, put him in a place where he's no longer king and leader. He's not there you know, with the finest food and everything. He's now 
in the midst of a desert owning nothing. Some of us own nothing. We're not calling any names. Owning nothing, having nothing, coming down to ground zero. Come on. Come on. And you start to rebuke some spirits because you say, Lord, will never be in that. That could never be the Lord. That is some demon attacking me. And you start to get prideful with it now. And that's the very thing the Lord wants to remove. That's the very thing he wants out. He says, I'm taking you. And he says, don't you understand? I'm bringing you into this location for a reason because I need to sift you. This location was the very... Well, I don't like to come out here, but sometimes this thing bothers me. This location, the very location, Horev, would eventually be Sinai. The very place where the presence of God was. The very place where Moses received the Ten Commandments. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of us might be in a place, you might be in a work and a job and it's all drudgery to you and Lord why you have me here. But you don't understand, that may be the very place where the Lord is going to bless you abundantly greater than you could ever ask or think. You might be in this ministry and you is this all about my God is not a place that a thousand people my God why am I here but you don't understand God may put you here because it may be the very place where he's going to bless you you see Horev then you think God's presence wasn't there then you think all of a sudden his presence came when it was changed to Sinai did God, all of a sudden, he left Horeb and then came back when it was Sinai? Since what? He was always there. I said he was always there. Right now, he is there. If you have already experienced the desert, if you are in the desert right now, I'm here to say to you, God is there with you in the midst of the desert. In the 40 years that Moses was there just living quietly in the back of the desert where nobody knew who he was, that he was going to be this mighty man of God. Nobody else in all the Bible saw as many miracles as a Moses. My God, do you understand what I'm talking about? Nobody knew. When David was serving his father in the back of that, that, that desert area there, where nobody knew what he was doing. Holding with his bare hand and, and with a, a, a lion and a bear and destroying it. Nobody knew. How many of us right now, you're in the midst of a desert and you are this amazing intercessor. You are this prayer warrior. You are doing so much privately and nobody knows what you are doing. Location, location, location. And this day, there's this one day that we're reading here. A day like no other. Like any normal day, we come to church. Like any normal day, we go to work. Like any normal day, we come home, we with our family. Like any normal day that turned out to be extraordinary. Because God said, you see, now I'm going to shift your location. Come on, you better get ready. How many of you ready to shift your location as Enoch was? How many of you ready to shift location as Enoch was? How many of you ready to shift? Do that translation. Come on. Are you ready? Verses 2 and 3. Exodus 3, verses 2 and 3. And it says, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will not turn aside great sight. I will now turn aside and see this great 
side. Why the bush does not burn. And as you see that this burning bush is not an uncommon thing for a desert, yeah? Deserts will normally have little sparks, and you will find sometimes that there's this bush, and the bush would burn. He's always been in the desert for a whole 40 years. He would have seen that sort of thing quite often, but for some reason, this time it caught his attention. This bush was burning, but it was not consuming. Let me ask you something. How many of you feel that you're going to be consumed with the burning that you're experiencing? Listen, I, I don't know. You know, some people, listen, I, I, sometimes I would speak for now, and sometimes the Holy Spirit would have me speak for a time to come. And so, and so you say, okay, yeah, prophet, things okay with me right now, and you know it's all right. I'm not, in, you know, not, I'm not consumed. Praise God! But let me tell you, you're not consumed now. You will be, because you've got to go through. I said you've got to go through the process. Mm -hmm. We want eternity, right? We've got to go through a process. All right, and so, and so you, you, you feel as though, my God, this is consuming me. Okay, so it's me alone. Praise God, I'll just minister to myself. But what is interesting here is this. He noticed a miracle. You know, so many times, unfortunately, miracles happen in our lives all the time. And we just let it pass by. You know, every time we come to the presence of the Lord here, it's a miracle. Because the presence of God is here. But we take it for granted. We take it for granted. We take lightly his awesome presence. And I'm going to speak about that shortly. And, and so for this whole scenario here is one that, that, that is just phenomenal. Because this angel... Of the Lord was no ordinary angel. Because how many of you know you can't worship an angel? Lucifer wanted to be worshipped and he was kicked out of heaven. Come on. He wanted the angel to worship him. That's it for you, sayonara. But this angel was one that demanded that... that that Moses could have worshipped, therefore, who is he? He was God. He was pre incarnate Christ. He was pre incarnate Christ. And I'm going to read this for you. Let's read for you Acts chapter 7, verse 30, because this is Stephen, verse 30. Imagine Stephen speaking to the council just before he died. Huh? Stephen speaking to the council, and he's giving the testimony of a Moses. And he's explaining carefully. The angel of the Lord, and who is the angel of the Lord? And he says, and when 40 years had passed, verse 30, and when 40 years had passed, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire, in a bush, in the wind. And when Moses, of course, you can call it Sinai after, right? And when Moses saw it, he marveled sight. And as he drew near to observe, you see, Moses marveled, right? Drew near to observe the voice of the Lord came to him saying, I am, I am the God, I am whom? The God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Abraham, and the God of Jacob. You see who he is? So he's the ordinary angel. And Moses trembled because he dared not look at the face of God. So even in the bush, it was likened unto the face of God. So we, it is the pre-incarnate Christ. Amen. Many times in the Old Testament when you see the angel of the Lord, it is pre-incarnate Christ. Amen. And so now that 40 years have passed of serving where nobody knew what you were doing really, you are the state leader after the end of the 40 years of faithfulness. Say faithfulness. The shift of location came immediately and then suddenly because the leader. I said because he honored the leader. How many of you have arguments with your in-laws? Don't answer. He honored 
the leader. Serving. He could have said, well, you don't know who I am? You don't know where I come from? Come on. He could have my role. As a matter of fact, he could have gone further. Mm? He could have said, let me take some of those and I will go and find my people. 40 years we talked about. Some people do a little course. And after the little course, they figure, well, like, listen, I could start my own ministry. I could be called apostle. No, I'm not. I'm just, I'm just saying, right? I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. But we have, we have got to realize that in the midst of, a, of, of the fire that is surrounding us, in the midst of the fire that we are in, that God is in the midst of it. Since, since I don't know right now if we, if we know that he's here with us. I know we talk about it. How many of you know that, that uh, Christians, believers are really good at talking about this? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You're here with us, God. Thank you, Father. Are we really good at that? But then we, we grasp it. Something happened over. Or we quick, quick to complain about somebody. Or we quick to run our mouth on somebody. This morning the Lord said to me, he says, my people speak about other people more than the unbeliever. He told me that this morning, Barry. He says, my people. You ever notice why my husband continuously speak about gossiping? You think it's like a broken record? It's not. Because the Lord said his people speak more about people negatively than the people outside. Than the people outside. So you, you, you wonder why God is telling us right and now that location your position right is very important. And you need to continuously wash yourself in his blood and get ready for a fresh, a fresh. And that's why he said, come again, born again, come again. And I'm not talking about coming up to an altar and saying, that's not, where, let's not, let's not be religious here. And that's not where we're going. I'm talking about literally daily or momentarily coming before God. Lord, I am wretched. I desperately need you. Constantly, Lord, I need you. Because of my thoughts, my words, my words, my, my words. Come on. But we forget, we forget, you know, you know, with Moses here, this, this whole experience here, Moses, this whole amazingly supernatural experience, we forget to bless God in the midst of everything. You know, how many of you know the amazing things have happened in our lives for this whole year that is gone? There's so much, when we think about the year, how many of you know it could have been far worse? Yes. Have we truly sat down and blessed him that we were divinely protected? Come on, we could have gotten COVID. We, our family were close. But listen, it could have been far, far worse. We could have lost this building. I'm telling you, it could have been far worse. We have so much to bless God for, yet we forget to bless him. We forget to bless him. So we need to start all over again. We need to return to our original place. We need to start back. We need to start back. We need to start back. That circuit has got, we got to go back to our first. I've said it over and I'm saying it again. We've got to get back where we were, we were so in love with the Lord. Lord, Lord, I just love you. Let me get that back again. And if I never had it, Lord, let me have it now. Exodus chapter 2, 4 and 6. Four to six. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush. See, see, Moses turned and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, I am. And then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet for the place and this holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God. And this is what we read. Moreover, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham and, Isaac, and, and, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look at him. Uh, to look upon God. It was only at the point of turning aside 
that God addressed Moses. Lord, I need to hear your voice in the midst of this. Lord, my, my, uh, my marriage is going apart. It's falling apart. Lord, my business or Lord, my relatives, they're just not speaking to me anymore. Lord, there's chaos in the work. Lord, I'm unemployed. Lord, my health. Lord, I need to lose weight. I did not say that. <laughs> Lord, a series of things is happening to me. Come on. And we go down that road. We say it over and over again. Only two people. I think I'm speaking to the wrong crowd. <laughs> but it was when he turned aside that the Lord spoke to him. How many of us are just turning away? We're turning away when God is speaking. How many of us don't want to hear what God has to say? How many of us don't really want to hear what God has to say? God has to How many of you, how many of you truly would say, Prophet, if I'm going wrong, correct me. Don't you put up your hand. Because when the time comes, you don't know what you'll do. You hear what I'm saying? Moses looked and God spoke. And God did not just speak. God had to catch Moses' attention. And so he said, oh, Moses, Moses. In case, Moses, you did not hear me the first time I'm calling you, I'm going to call you again. Moses, how many of you know Abraham was Abraham, 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 Abraham. It was Samuel, Samuel. Come on, how many of you remember that? Come on, it was Martha, Martha. Martha was hard of hearing. Come on, it was Saul, Saul. There are times in the Bible where the Lord will call us twice because the first time we did not hear him. He's gracious. And I'm here to say to you, God is calling you. You have got to get into location. You have got to get it. You may not want this location of prime real estate right now. Lord, give me somewhere else somewhere. Lord, I want a mansion. My God, with, with two fridges and, and, and three pools. One fridge for me and my family and one fridge for my husband all by himself. How many of you want that? Don't put your hand up. Because you might very well get it, but it may not be from the Lord. And we find ourselves, Lord, when the Lord is calling us, he's calling us and he ensures that we, that he, that we would be able to hear his voice. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. The God hated Esau. The word hate there means despised. You know why the Lord despised Esau, who was called from birth because he was the firstborn? He had an assignment. It was because he refused to one acknowledge his assignment and to for, uh, carry it out. He was willing to give up his assignment for flesh. Listen to me, saints. In order for us, in order for us to get into that location where God wants us to be and move us into that position that He wants us to be, we have got to receive the position. We have got to receive the call. We have got to say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this thing. I have no idea. But yes, Lord. You know, for me and the e-college, the Lord spoke to me about doing this college. You're not understanding where I'm going here. He spoke to me about it. And my answer was, Lord, how on earth? Because you have no idea the cost of this thing. And I said, it is impossible. Say impossible. It is impossible for me to do this, Lord. Impossible. 
This is why, this is why for me, when people take this thing, this, this thing for granted, you don't understand. This is God saying, God speaking about this, you know. And people will just take, imagine I offered scholarships and nobody will take it up. You don't understand. The, the only reason I'm saying this, the only reason, is because when God gives us an assignment, he provides, he opens the way, he makes the way for it. We, we don't have to, we just look back and say, oh my God, how did you do this? How did you do this? And here's, here's Lord, well, you shift location. You were able to go in the desert. And you didn't complain in the desert. Like the children of Israel. You stayed there. And you went up the mountain. You see, Moses took the flock up the mountain. And you went up the mountain so that you could see what I'm about to do. From a heavenly perspective. So faith rose up in you. And because that faith rose up in you, you pleased me. It couldn't happen in the natural. And it didn't happen in the natural. But because faith rose up in you, because you were able to see, don't, don't get this wrong. Abraham, as a man of faith, it was not because he didn't know and he couldn't see anything. That is not the reason he was a man of faith. It was because... He could see the way. It was because there was only one way. There was only one road from his father's house to where he had to go. There was one road to today in Israel. The road is still there and the road has a name and it is called the way. It was not that he didn't know the way. He didn't know what was going to happen along the way. And God says, just keep moving. Just keep moving. Just keep moving. Don't stop. Don't stop. When my door is open, whether it's in your home, whether it's in uh, whether it's in this ministry, whether it's online, well, just keep moving. Don't stop run because I'm going to continue to pour into you don't stop because I'm going to I'm going to complete your cycle and as you repent you're going to start all over with me just keep moving watch and see what I am going to do. watch and see me do this you're going to come to the end of a, of a time and a season and I'm going to let you start all over again I'm going to wash you clean just keep moving but he said, you see, the key was, the key was, Moses served. There was no familiarity. There was no disrespect. He served, and he served, and he served. I don't care if he had to just go and get water for, for Jethro. I don't care if he had to clean Jethro's toilet. I, but you're not hearing me. I don't care if he had to, if he had to, uh, to vacuum Jethro's floor. I don't care if he had to paint Jethro's house. I don't care if he had to put out Jethro's garbage. When nobody could see what he was doing. He served quietly and faithfully. And if anybody would come up against his father-in-law, he don't mess with that. He stayed for 40 years, which means, which means if anybody spoke against his father-in-law, he did not have itching ears. 40 years, you know, you think anybody, you don't think that in that process of time somebody would have said something negative about Jethro? He ignored it. I said he ignored it. This is what it's supposed to be. 
This is where I'm supposed to be until God says otherwise. And what did God do? God created my God suddenly. Say suddenly. The thing about location, the amazing thing about location, it may take a process to get into the desert. But as it takes a process, when God says, I'm taking you out, he does it suddenly. You're going to come out of your desert suddenly. When the Lord says that you are properly trained and you are ready, and as you climb that mountain, you could see clearly, and so your faith is risen enough that I can take you out of there, say suddenly. He will do it suddenly. Are you ready for a suddenly time? I know I, I am ready for a suddenly time. And God prepared Moses. The location that takes us into position for promotion is at the back of a humble desert. The humble desert is a place of service. service you know I'm going to close by saying these things here I'm closing now you know it's amazing that we have to close now let me say this we need to get it we need to get it we need to ha stop having hang ups we just need to stop. Believers, we need to stop having thin skins. We need to stop being so, uh, uh, what's the word? Oversensitive. Have offense. Imagine Christ said that he's going to be an offense to people just by his words. We need to stop. Receive the word. Receive the word. Let it convict. I know for me, I want to always start all over. Because we mess up. And I don't want to go from my messed up state to go forward. Can we, can we, how, how can we be in a race and we've tumbled in the race? Do you think we will win? You think we're going to finish even? We may break our leg along the way. But God says, you know what I'm going to do in this race? I'm going to allow you to start all over. And, you're going to, and I'm going to heal you. I'm going to restore you. I'm going to make you all fresh all over again. So that you can get back into that race. And you're going to complete that race. You're going to be the one to endure to the end. I said, you're going to be the one to endure to the end of this race. Don't worry about hustling. Don't worry about wanting all the titles and all the positions. Take your time, says the Lord. Take your time and wait for me. Be properly processed. Be properly processed. Because I am going to move you from one location into another location. And it's I, the Lord, that I'm doing it. Don't be confused. Don't be concerned. When you pick up yourself and you go, you are out of my cloud. So let's just stand a moment and I'm going to just pray for you. Just close our eyes. Father, thank you. Lord, everything in your perfect time. Everything. Everything. Everything in your perfect time. Lord, if we are right now out of the location that you would have us be, whether it is a mental, come on. Whether it is a mental, whether it is a spiritual, we're out of spiritual location. Lord, increase our faith. Let the measure of faith that we have right now, let it increase by your word. For faith comes by hearing the logos and faith comes by hearing the rhema. Hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. Give us the logos. Give us the rhema over and over and over and over again. That the measure of faith, Lord Enoch pleased you. 
because of faith. By faith. And so, Father, today, here we are. Lord, we want to be born again. Again. Lord, if we've been messing up by just being so absolutely complacent with you, just doing the road of Christianity. I suspect that many are doing the road of Christianity. Are not the intimacy of who you are. So there's no falling in love. Therefore, there's no visitation. Lord, we want access into your throne. But here we are, God, so we have to repent. Where we see you, God, as something out there. Rather than you being in him. Rather for you being a giver. Rather than being the God of love. Today, God, he says, if the best real estate right now in this season to be at the back of a desert where we can visually see a mountain, a mountain where if we were to look ahead of time would be the very manifested presence of your glory. We can literally here today, God, prophetically see that it will be that place of ascension. That you will take. We receive the desert, God, because we know that you will supply all our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ. We know that even in the midst of a desert, we will never know lack. We will never know lack. Even in the midst of a desert, you're the God that healeth us. And so when we cry out to you, Father God, in the midst of this prime real estate that you say that we must be in right and now, Lord, let it be that we understand the life cycle that we have to be in. Lord, according to your season, according to your season, God. And Lord, if you're taking some of us out in Passover, Lord, we glorify you. If you're taking some of us out in Pentecost, we glorify you, God. But Lord, let it be that we are walking all these circumstances according to perfect alignment. Because by your blood, by your blood, by your blood, wash us. I want you to see yourself washed in his blood. Every sin, every sin, every sin that want to easily beset us, every thought, every thought, everything we want to say, every curse word, every by God, I don't know, whatever God is, whatever the Lord is revealing to you right and now, where our, our walk is mischievous, my God, whatever we want to do that is evil and wicked to somebody else, my Lord, Lord, today wash us, wash us, cleanse us. We are an imperfect people. So you wash us, God, so that we can start all over again. <laughs> that we can go back to original intent. That's where you want us, God. You want us in original intent. That we can walk the walk in location with you. For, come on, let's just give him glory. Come on, let's just give him glory. Come on, let's just give him glory. Glorify your name. Hallelujah. We praise you. We praise you.